let's begin. The first thing that I would like to say about this show um, that kind of makes it so um, special is um, just the fact that it has such an interesting beginning. Um, and the curator, Felix Angel, um, you know, uh, created this initiative to kind of uh, bring all of uh, these printmakers of Colombia together. Um, in Medellin, and um, he wanted to kind of be able to show and portray um, all of the artistic work that was going on, and he wanted to shed some light on it, and Felix is here with us right now, and he just wants to give a brief overview of kind of just how everything began and the origins of this show. This show is uh, an extension of that original show in Colombia and just kind of a taste of everything that's happening there currently. And so we're gonna be playing a video from that event while Felix just kind of um, talks more about it. Felix, are you still there? Um, well, thank you, Catherine. Uh, before I give a brief um, outline of what the Cuentro as a project is, uh, I would like to express my a profound gratitude uh, with Gail Nathan, the director of the Bronx River Art Center, with to you, Catherine, Catherine Miranda, who's been coordinating all the details of this presentation, uh, to my dear friends uh, Julio Valdez from Julio Valdez Projects and um, Ezequiel Taveras, both from Dominican Republic, both artists and both of them also pre-makers. And to the entire staff of the of BRAC, um, not only for taking the show, uh, giving the artists an opportunity, the artists from Medellin, the pre-makers from Medellin, an opportunity to exhibit the work uh, abroad and in a metropolitan area as important as New York is. Um, I can tell you that this this opportunity is very rare for the artists in general in Medellin and especially for the pre-makers. Uh, but that gratitude really extends um, to the fact that I am really um, grateful um, for the professionalism Bragg has displayed in, the, in all the details pertaining to the show. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm really uh, impressed and honored in a way that the work of the artists from the city where I was born um, has been treated in the way it's been treated. Um, uh, my, I can't stop talking about uh, the wonderful job that all of you have done, and I want to congratulate you for, the, congratulate you for that. Um, this exhibit, as uh, Catherine pointed out at the beginning, is an outgrowth of a larger project called Encuentro, which um, um, came about just as a, an idea at the beginning uh, that resulted from the cancellation of the art fair in the city of Medellin, which was which was a kind of an experiment that lasted only for four years. So when the art fair was canceled, um, it sort of uh, became obvious that um, to establish some continuity uh, as far as artistic events in the city are concerned is very difficult. Uh, so I, um, I decided that Medellin needed something that uh, reflected the creativity of its artists. Um, and, and of course, I take it very personal because I was born there. Uh, so I, I decided to do it with the pre-makers because pre-making is a, um, it's an activity that implies uh, working together in many ways. I mean, the painters, the sculptors, even the, perfor the performing artists can work very well by themselves and 
decide everything by themselves. But sometimes with printmaking, you need a lot of help in order to uh, pull off uh, an edition of, uh, of prints. Um, and also, is logistically, it's not as complicated as putting together an art fair with heavy sculptures and uh, that involve you know heavy logistics, complicated logistics and a lot of money for transportation and so forth. So um, I decided to um, uh, get pushed to this initiative, and I called a few printmakers I knew. Actually, some of them are tonight with us, and I invited them to work with me in a completely volunteer basis, um, to uh, creating a coordinating committee, because, you know, I live in Washington, I cannot be all the time in Medellin, of course, but they can because they live and work there. So that's how the um, that's what we structure. Let's put it that way. The um, the managerial aspect of the event, uh, and then uh, there was the aspects of the philosophy of the event, which uh, had to be. Uh, ha- had to facilitate the artists their participation uh, in order to really make a big show of force uh, to the public. Uh, so we decided that the participation was going to be for free. I mean, they didn't, nobody had to pay any fee to register or anything. And, um, of course, we got the sponsors uh, for that. Um and uh, that's how uh, eventually through social media we were able to gather uh, 75 artists for the first Encuentro in Medellin, which took place in a facility lent to us by the city of Medellin, newly constructed and very handsome uh, construction. And it was a very successful uh, gathering um, not to mention the novelty uh, of the event in itself, because I don't think, I mean, I don't know uh, of any similar experience done before with the pre-makers in Medellin. So um, uh, in order to um, extend the outreach of that initiative and uh, to demonstrate that the pre-makers uh, represented a great potential um, in, in the sense that it could show um, how much creativity the city has, um, even to export. You know, so I decided to put together an exhibition uh, of um, a determined group of artists. Of course, I couldn't include everybody for obvious reasons, and that's how the um, the um, the work of 18 artists were selected. Uh, Scattering mentioned uh, 16 are working, uh, currently working, and two are deceased. Uh, we'll talk about them later. Um, and this, the, the exhibit was first presented in Washington at the gallery of the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, where I used to direct uh, the cultural center, and of which I was the curator of the art collection of the bank. So I, um, they also opened the doors to the exhibit, and we had a great reception, not only by the public but by the press, to the point that the Washington Post gave us a, a review, and uh, the East City Arts, which is the only publication in Washington specialized in art criticism, you know, not, not only commentaries, but our criticism gave us a very lengthy review of the exhibition. And and then I, I wanted to to sort of, um, having the exhibition in Washington, I wanted to even stretch, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the possibilities of the exhibit, and that's how um, we ended up in conversations with uh, Gail and... She was very enthusiastic from the very beginning, uh, and again, I'm very thankful for that. 
Uh, she wanted to come to Washington to see the works, but the pandemic uh, prevented her from doing that. But we, we had, I had all the material, um, visual material, so um, she was able to get a good appreciation of the, of the exhibit. And then uh, I'm so glad that the first activity of the year uh, in the visual arts with BRAC in 2021 is uh, the exhibition Beyond the Encuentro. We had a second Encuentro in 2020, but because of the pandemic, we had to do it in a virtual uh, format. And uh, it was very uh, satisfying to realize that um, nearly 150 artists registered, uh, and eventually 125 ended participating, and, and it was also a, a, a great success, uh, judging from the uh, statistics, you know, that social media is able to generate in hits and people who likes it and so forth, you know. So um, we are now gearing up for the third encounter, encuentro, gathering, uh, in 2022, and the exhibit um, at, the, at BRAC, I think, will be a tremendous, oh, yes, a tremendous backing to the project. Um, I, I know it was not intended to be that way, but, <laughs> but in, indeed it is. And we are planning to publicize the uh, the very good um, um, initiative, you know, taken by Brack in housing the exhibit and um, promoting the art of the artists from Medellin, the pre-makers, um, which, which is so, uh, I find so appropriate um, to be there uh, because we share a number of uh, values um, regarding how art should be um, make it made easy for people to appreciate it and see it um, and talk about um, so there are in the end there are more commonalities than one can think um, with this exhibition coming from Medellin and the exhibition being placed in a neighborhood like the Bronx at BRAC. Uh, Felix, I just want to give some um, context to the video that's currently playing, um, mm -hmm. just for everyone. Uh, so this is um, a video loop of the installation at BRAC. And as Gail had mentioned earlier, um, this show is can be seen uh, live in our gallery. Um, we just wanted to have a virtual reception, you know, to keep everyone safe. Um, but uh, you can feel free with uh, reservations um, to come and see all of this work. And we just wanted to give everyone a sense of how um, the show actually looked in our gallery and just give like a little preview to how beautiful all these works actually are. Um, and so we're actually gonna get to show you all um, some of the works that are in the show. So, but thank you, Felix, for providing context for this show and everything, you know, that kind of really went into this and how important it is um, to you and to everyone um, that everyone see this work and be able to witness it and have exposure. So thank you for that. My pleasure. Okay, and with that comes our first artist that we have, um, Victoria Ortiz. And uh, we have about one work from each artist. And so for the presentation, we have her print, which is Memories from Childhood. 
uh, made in 1997. And uh, some artists with us today um, have wanted to, you know, speak and share a little bit about their work and the works that they have in the show in particular. Um, and so Victoria, whenever you're ready, you might have to unmute yourself, Victoria. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. I just want to say thank you to Felix for what he has done to us to bring the printmakers from Colombia or from Medellin to Washington and New York from the opportunity of the gallery to open the door for us and to all the artists who has responded to our knock on the doors. Uh, it had been a success, the first and the second show of pre-makers. I want just to say some few words about my work. I did these pieces when I was living in Paris and I printed by hand, they are small woodcuts. I work a lot in all the kind of printmakers, um, medium, like a litho stone, a etching on copper plate, woodcuts, silk screen, monoprint. A, those pieces were inspired by my uh, feeling of wanting to be in my country. I have lived in Europe for 30 years and I have decided to return to my roots, to my country. And I love my country very much and I am living now in the countryside. And that's it, that's what I want to say. Thank you, Victoria. Right. <laughs> um next we have um uh Diego and um this is his work which is displaced person um and it's made with a dry point um on paper And then we have Hernando Guerrero, um, who makes these beautiful um, abstract works. Um, and uh, Hernando has asked me to speak a little bit on his work. So he sent me a text um, that he would like me to read. And so he says uh, that this printing process, which is a calligraph, allows me to directly relate uh, the graphics with uh, painting in both the elaboration of the matrices and in the pictorial possibilities through color and its rich possibilities. In my last works, I also use a colograph with previously printed papers and then glued as a chine collé. I feel very good and comfortable when I work in this manner because I'm also interested in improvisation and the spontaneousness of gesture. Um, and so um, this just kind of reflects a little bit about Hernando's work and um, his practice. Then we have uh, Jorge, George. And Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Um, and this well, work you. is uh, from the Permeable series from 2016, a calligraph and monotype. Um, and so feel free to. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for having us in, in, at your gallery and for, for, for allow, allowing us to, to show our work in New York. We're very happy and we're very honored to be exhibiting there. And uh, well, I, 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 this work, the, the permeable series, it's, um, it's, a, it's an experimental work that I've been developing since like 2015. I started, I, pre previously, I was very interested in uh, architecture and uh, urban elements and, 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 and figurative uh, compositions. 
and somehow I was like um, um, interested in developing more um, freely um, devised uh, print. And so I started using uh, elements that are found around in, the, uh, in, the, in, in my workshop. I work at La Stampa workshop here in Medellin. And uh, I also work at the University of Antioquia. Um, and the kind of the experience with the students and um, like the, this uh, um, um, idea of research, resourcefulness um, um, that might be applied to printmaking the, um, that directed me to, 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 to this uh, more experimental, more abstract work. So um, the permeable, are, it's focused on um, permeable series. It's focused on the um, on this on, on a particular search around the um, a spatial representation, or it's like like uh, the um, um, juxtaposition juxtaposition of different elements, and that's like trying to devise a, a, a certain um, space like relation that. With the with the elements that might be um, visible um, when when they're printed on when they're passed through the press and uh, the like the chance or the, like this kind of encounter that appears when these elements are devised over a, over a printing plate on the press. That's it. Thank you. What a for that. Um, okay. Yeah, I really like the the texture of this work. I just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, next, we have uh, Armando Londonio Gomez. Um, Armando said he would try possibly to be here with us tonight. Um, I'm not sure if he is. Um, Armando, if you're here, just let us know. <laughs> Um, yeah. um, and his work um, are these um, abstract uh, shape forms, um, which he calls unstable forms. Um, and this one was made in 2017. Um, are we yeah. going to hear from him, <laughs> his relation, uh, his indebtedness and and obvious love of constructivism yeah and uh and and obviously as it evolved in russia and eastern europe i love that relationship between two completely divergent uh cultures if this comes up out of south america <laughs> beautiful um, next, we have um, Julio San Pedro Longas. And uh, Julio said that he wasn't able to join tonight, but he did send me a video um, that he wanted to share where he was able to speak a little bit about his work. And so I just want to show um, his work, um, which is a silk screen. And this one is called Nona, made in 2017. Um, let's see if I can pull up the video that he sent. Hello, everybody. My name is... Can everyone hear that? Yes. yes. Cool. Hello, everybody. My name is Julio San Pedro. I am honored to, to take part of this meeting. Thanks to all who made it possible, the Bronx River Art Center, Felix Angel, and all my colleagues. Uh, <clears throat> the pair of silk screen prints in this exhibition are part of a series of six that reproduce an experience from my childhood. Uh, looking at the sky and abstracting myself for the world around me. They are the constancy of what I saw and I felt. 
the ones you can see in this exhibition, Vísperas and Nona, take back two of those events, the planes and the kites. Uh, they both uh, taught me the poetry of the fly, the wind, the melancholy of departures and the value of uh, child's dreams. Like me, the sky, the sky changed. I, it, it was, it was uh, never, uh, it was never the same sky. The colors of the day or the night were associated with events uh, at night, Venus or the moon or insects looking for heat in the street lamps. In the daytime, the birds resting on the wires, not only all those things, not only market different hours and days and nights, but market my childhood and my being. Um, well, that's all. Thank you and goodbye. And we're back. Um, yeah, so that was just Julio, a little bit about his work on Nona. Um, everyone can see the presentation again. Thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next, we have Male Correa. Um, and she's also joining us here. And she would like to speak a little bit about her work. And this is Good Girl and Bad Girl. And it's also silk screen. Male, whenever you're ready. Thank you. I'm going to read a very short text. First of all, I want to thank Bronx River Art Center for this opportunity, and also Catherine Miranda for her support, and also curator Felix Angel. I'm a graphic designer, but work as a visual artist since 2002. I'm a painter, a printmaker, and I'm interested also in drawing. My early works were figurative paintings about urban scenes. I used to visit a very poor area downtown in my city, mostly the canteens and shelters. I found beauty in those places that are commonly seen as dirty and dangerous. During my first solo exhibition in 2002, a lady asked, why did I paint drunk man in, in, in bars? I had no answer for that question by then, but several years later, something happened in my life. I knew my father. I had no notice of him since I was born. My parents get divorced because he was an alcoholic. Well, when I was 23 year old, I read in a local newspaper that Mr. Mario Correa was coming to Medellin to work with the government as a lawyer. My father, I said, then I went to his office to meet him, and we started a very beautiful friendship. During our chats, I discovered that when, when he was a law student in Medellin, he used to visit and inhabit the same places I was painting. So I came across the answer for the lady's question. Unconsciously, I was searching for the father. Now. I think that the search for the father is the search for oneself. That's why I can summarize my artistic work in a word, which is identity. The pieces I present in this exhibition explore another aspect of my identity. That is my condition of having a twin sister. It's interesting that, that I'm unique because I'm a repeated human being. With these two prints, I try to see myself in singular because I have lived all my life in plural. These works are made using the technique of silk screen. Thank you. Thank you, Male. Yeah, um, and you can correct me, um, but just for those who may not know, there's plata yes. on the left and oro, and plata is silver and oro is gold. Yes. Um, just for those who aren't aware. Um, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. 
Uh, next, we have Juan Ernesto Correa, which uh, might look familiar to a lot of you. Um, we ended up using his image of him at work for our exhibition card. Um, and he uh, creates these uh, beautiful works through a very unique uh, digital process. And this one is Desnudo, which is nude. Um, and uh, it's just kind of uh, the textures and the way that the image is formed is uh, very beautiful and one of a kind. Um, and I just wanna oh, take some time to kind of just appreciate all of the visualness um, and all of the texture that's found in this print. And this one was made in 2018. It's manipulated and digital photography on a photo polymer um, printed on Somerset paper. And next we have Luis, um, and this is his work, um, which is from the Aroba series. It's a reduction block linoleum print. Um, I liked all of the shapes <laughs> in this uh, work and just kind of the transitions of the colors. Uh, next we have, um, Alvaro Otero Gallego, and this is his work, which is Visible Barrier, the second. Um, and I like his work just because of how graphic everything is um, and the stark contrast between each of the colors. Then we have Jessica, um, and she, Jessica is also here with us. Um, she would like to speak a bit about her work. Here we have the gold nugget um, made in 2019 and Jessica is more comfortable speaking in Spanish. And so she's going to speak and have a translator. Um, I think, uh, uh, George, if you wouldn't mind um, providing that service for us. Sure, I can do it. Yeah, um, oops, yeah. Jessica. Um... Puedes, eh, puedes hablar. Hola, buenas noches. ¿Cómo están todos? ¿Me escuchan? Sí, sí. te estamos escuchando. Dale. Eh, bueno, esta pieza particularmente hace parte de un ejercicio que realizamos en el taller de grabado eh, al cual pertenezco, que se llama Taller Gráfico del Sótano. Quisimos hacerle un homenaje al maíz como uno de los, eh, de los cereales eh, que han sostenido pues como nuestra región eh, a lo largo de, de muchísimos años, de siglos quizás. Y eh, la denominamos granito de oro, eh, como lo llaman muchos de los indígenas de nuestro territorio. Es un, es un linoleo al saco perdido. Eh, y bueno, eh, de eso se trata la pieza particularmente. Ok, so Jessica se dice. Dale, dale. Ah. Bueno, eh, y bueno, quiero agradecer eh, a todos por brindarnos este espacio. Eh, me siento muy honrada de compartir hoy con todos los que estamos acá. Eh, gracias en especial a Félix, eh, a las personas de la galería y a todos los organizadores del encuentro. De verdad, es un trabajo impecable y ha sido muy valioso para todas las personas que estamos en estos momentos participando. Gracias. Okay, so, so Jessica, uh, thanks everyone, um, um, especially Félix uh, for um, gathering the works and um, and everyone at Brack for at Brack gallery for for having this uh, exhibition organized and it's a it's a great opportunity and she's very thankful for the for the space and for the opportunity and uh, 
regarding to her to her print, um, she says that uh, this is um, a line of cut um, um, reduction uh, reduction uh, re process line of cut. It's uh, called the gold nugget, and it's um, like the traditional, a, a particular denomination that the locals um, the um, Aboriginal um, habitants from from the Americas and the people around in the, in the, in the region used to call before the the Spanish the Spanish um, came to 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 America, and uh, this is this is an homage. Uh, she she the, she says that it belongs to a series that um, she and her and her um, colleagues at uh, La El Sotano workshop, the, the, it's the basement workshop, that's the nomination of the workshop. Um, they, they did a, um, 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 they did an, an homage to, to the corn, to, to this traditional and very, very important um, uh, staple from, 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 uh, from the region who, who's, the, it's very, has been a, like a, um, in a in very important and uh, study has a starring uh, like very 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 determinate uh, um, position in the in the local um, um, uh, as a local uh, food staple. Thank you for that and for playing <laughs> translator for us. And thank you, uh, Jessica, for participating in our show. Um, I just need to say that, especially I think with this work, um, for everyone who's watching, um, it's important to come live. Um, there's a really shiny, beautiful texture to this work that you can only really see in person. Um, and actually um, we have a, I don't know if everyone saw, and I just wanna bring attention to it, but um, Alvaro wrote a little note about his work in the chat. So anyone who wants to see it and read it and get more context um, about his work, um, you can feel free to check um, what he wrote in the chat. Um, I just wanna put that out there for everyone to see. All right, next we have Monica um, and provided this uh, beautiful picture of herself for us. Um, I think Monica also is more comfortable talking in Spanish um, and she would like to talk about um, her work, which is another linoleum print um, called To Become. Um, Monica, whenever you're ready. Hi. Mm -hmm. Sí, eh, bueno, el interés por el espacio y las maneras de habitarlo son un tema eh, frecuente en mi obra artística. En este sentido, los escenarios domésticos y la casa es protagonista porque la considero el escenario central del devenir humano, eh, reflejo del ser, la cual considero como un lugar significativo en donde se construye la experiencia, se tejen las relaciones y se guarda la memoria. The interest for spaces and ways to inhabit them is the most frequent themes of my artistic work as the main stage of the human living and reflection of its being, which I consider the most significant space in which experiences are constructed and relationships are weaved to memory in which leaves to its habitants signs of presence in things, in each other, living in a symbolic way, the way of living. Eh, bueno, he mm, explorado varias técnicas de, de grabado pero en esta última serie, en las últimas técnicas que, que utilizamos muy frecuentemente, es el linoleo pictórico, porque me interesa eh, los colores pues, que dan, la tinta, cómo como genera una textura particular eh, sobre ese soporte de, de linoleo, sobre la placa de linoleo. Entonces, esta serie también como explorando esos espacios tan coloridos que son muchas veces nuestras casas y esta serie como también de espacios de, de objetos antiguos de nuestras casas eh, maternas. Entonces veo que eh, tiene pues mucho que ver con lo que yo quiero expresarse, toda esa intimidad del de hogar. 
So what, what I'm most interested about um, this type of work is the textures, the colors that shine through the work, and also is a space that it's um, old and symbolic and that it brings forward a lot of different memories to different people. Thank you for, for esta oportunidad de, de estar en este espacio con estos grandes artistas. Me siento muy, muy agradecida por eso y muy afortunada de compartir con ustedes esta experiencia. And thank you very much for creating such an experience. I feel honored. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Monica found a great translator. She, she, could, have, she could have told us. So then, <laughs> you gotta, gotta help with Jessica as well. <laughs> yes, thank you for taking that role for us. We really appreciate it. Okay, so next for the works is um, oh, Fabian. Um, and Fabian is no longer with us but Felix um, had a close relationship to this particular artist and um, was willing to speak on his behalf and tell us a little bit more about his life and his work. Um, and so this is um, story. Um, and so Felix, uh, whenever you're ready, um, you can feel free to speak. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, when it comes to Fabian, I kind of hide, you know, a personal feeling. Uh, I had a great affection for him in the sense that uh, he was younger than me, and he he came to me one day to my studio along with other students from the Instituto the uh, for the Institute of Fine Arts of the. Uh, Universidad de Antioquia. Uh, at that time, I was having a, a kind of confrontation with with the school. Not, I was not a professor there. I didn't have anything to do with it, except the fact that I was an artist. And I disagree heavily with the way art was taught. Um, I had a a personal uh, underground gazette um, title, I say, and I use it to express my points of view and ideas about art and about the attitude of the city and the people of the city towards the arts. So he came to my studio with another uh, a few more artists b because he, he was curious, I guess, about me and he wanted to have a, a more open perspective and that's how our, our friendship began uh, eventually i realized that he had a, an enormous talent and um, we befriended each other he, he came frequently looking for some kind of advice um, later he was my student at the open studio of the local museum, the Museo de Sea, um, who had courses during the weekend. And they were very inexpensive for people who wanted to join and learn something. So he was one of my students there. Eventually, um, I came to the United States uh, right after I graduated as an architect. And we kept um, uh, in communication, you know, uh, through mostly through letters. In those days, there was no internet available, um, and I really he kept me up to date what what with what he was doing, and uh, I will comment. And uh, his work took off. His personal expression really took off when he uh, discovered, in a way between quotations, the linoleum technique and the reduction uh, technique within the linoleum technique. He really became, I would say, not only in Medellin, but in Colombia at large. Eventually, he moved to Bogota. He, 
he he really is a kind of a forerunner in in that particular technique, um, demonstrating an imagination, um, a fantastic imagination, and and a very sensible manner to handle color and texture. Eventually, I. Um, I was able to um, open up space for him, for him in, in a few galleries that represented my work in the United States and in, and in Puerto Rico. So he exhibited in Puerto Rico, in Denver, Colorado, and in Washington, D.C. Um, um, his styling was such that his efforts really uh, were really rewarded when he received a special prize at the in one of the uh, Puerto Rico graphic biennials, which for many years was um, a paradigm, let's say, among in Latin America, uh, among events. Uh, and he was a specialized in just in pre-making techniques. Unfortunately, he, he had a, an inborn condition in his heart uh, that worries, worries him very much all the time, you know, he will talk to me about that. And it was really the cause of his passing um, when he was in the mid-40s. So he died relatively young. Um, and if if he had lived longer, you know, he would have been indeed a, a very prominent artist, uh, not only in Colombia, but abroad because he had he, he was getting closer and closer to master his technique in such a way that he was uh, visually i would say irresistible um, his world his imagery was belonged to a fantastic world but at the same time was metaphoric of many things that were current. So it's a, it's a kind of work difficult to um, to explain, you know, or to interpret. Uh, but uh, I have always said that uh, the, the least important thing in, a, in an image is the, is the story that tells is really more important how it's told, and I think that's the case with Fabian. Thank you, Felix, for that and for providing us more insight um, into, you know, Fabian and his work and his life. Um, you know, um, his prints are, um, you know, his print that's in the show you know, really caught my eye. And so I'm glad that I was able to learn more about him. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, for the next, we have uh, Camilla. Um, and uh, her work is uh, mixed media. And she has these two. Um, we have this one, which is a self-portrait um, with the Monstera de la Ciosia plant. And um, her other work is also this kind of uh, grayscale um, imagery. Um, and it just kind of has a softness to it that I really like. Uh, next, we have uh, Anna Fernandez. Hi. Yes, who is here with us. Um, and she wants to talk a little bit about her work, which is uh, the one we have here is Let's Play in the Woods in 2019. Um, and so Anna, you know, whenever you're ready, feel free to jump in. Okay, hello. Um, um, I would like to thank Brack and Felix for giving us such a great venue to showcase our work. Our work it's um, an amazing opportunity. And well, um, before becoming an artist, I worked in marketing research and uh, I've been fascinated about what motivates us, what drives us as humans, our feelings, and more on a personal level. Um, 
I was struck by uh, the effect that motherhood uh, has in, in, our, uh, in our being and the emotions, the visceral need to protect that arises with motherhood. And in mm -hmm. fact, I, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And um, it's something that strikes me as, uh, as it's very intimate, but at the same time, it's a universal thing. It's something that for lack of a better word, when I find other, um, other women who are mothers, we all speak mother. And this is something I've seen that comes through in my work. Uh, this uh, need to protect this, this bond with our children. And it's not only as a mother, but I also find that it resonates um, with the people who see my work as children. And it's something that people have come up to me and said. And it's really very fulfilling to be able to create a bond. It's uh, find that, that commonality as human beings. As for the technique, uh, most, of my, most of my work uh, involves either drawing or uh, printmaking. I work a lot with uh, gripe point, aquatint and etching. In this case, it's both uh, aquatint and etching. The aquatint is worked with the uh, eyeliner uh, as a reserve uh, between more uh, between um, puritan acid and at the end I usually involve uh, I usually um, intervene my works with a color with watercolor sometimes I also use uh, um, uh, other uh, other methods such as uh, embroidery or, or crochet to work into my work to sometimes take it out of the paper and um, make it something three-dimensional. Mm. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, Anna, for sharing that with us. Um, yeah, really um, just kind of like the style and the way that the figures are, um, you know, just in white and it really stands out from the rest of the background, but you can still get all like of the nuanced texture in the back. Thank you. All right, next we have uh, Maria Lopez um, and this work is called The Embrace of Anguish. And um, Maria was supposed to speak tonight, but unfortunately um, she had an emergency. Um, and so uh, I just would like to say that um, this work is also definitely one to see in person. Um, you can really make out all of the detail um, that she put in to this work and everything um, that came about. And it's just a sight to see in person. Um, and hopefully she'll be able to join us for our artist talk. Um, and so next we have Carlos Marin. Um, and the work that we have here is In You He Trusted. And Carlos is also here with us. Um, and he also would like to speak a bit about his process. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Thank you for the, uh, to the BRAC, uh, to all the team, all the support. Uh, very professional work, and also to Felix for the for the work that has been done. Uh, for me, uh, it has been a pleasure to be there because I didn't expect it uh, to to have an exhibition in the beginning of the year. Uh, we are living very very strange times, so it, it's a very very nice work, uh, very nice way of, of being there in Radio in Europe. Uh, we expected to travel one day. Okay, I am working uh, with printmaking since 
more or less frequently since uh, 20 years ago. And I say that uh, you don't choose the technique, the technique choose, uh, the technique choose you. So mainly my work uh, has be, uh, is related with the uh, drawing, with the uh, image that I collect for everywhere. And in this particular piece, uh, this is a drawing taken from my, uh, from myself and, and in Boscomfi or in youth hypnosis, like to, uh, like to, uh, like, like a pride that we have uh, to Jesus, and and I like to to write in my plates. Uh, mainly, I I work in uh, print making with etching and aquatint, and in the other piece that that is in the in the exhibition, uh, I have different plates put together uh, with a, in, in a transfer of a, of a map of the Lisboa city. And I take different techniques, different plates and play together like uh, in the way that the designers of the newspapers do or did in the past, uh, putting the plates together and choosing the composition to do something. So. Uh, I like to the possibilities of the of the multiplicity of the technique more oh, than doing. Oh. Sorry, uh, I like the possibilities of the multiplicity of the plates more to to do a joy to do a a, a game with the a, a play with the images that to do it. A, a, a complete uh, series or complete edition. I like to play with the multiplicity more than this. Uh, thank you to everybody. This is that's all for for the moment. Mm, uh, and thank you to the bracket. Uh, it's very interesting the the way of working. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Carlos. And um, we're actually down to our final artist, um, Luis, with, who has also um, passed. And Felix also knew him intimately. And so we're going to end our little presentation, um, kind of just with Felix talking a little bit about his life and this particular work, which is the Year of the Comet, um, which is done so beautifully for us um, and delicately. So you can feel free to speak, Felix. Yes, thank you, Catherine. Um, uh, Luis Fernando was my classmate at the School of Architecture of the National University. Uh, we joined in 1967. Very important year because of the changes that the world was experiencing all over. So we, we develop a friendship right away, in fact, because we share our interest for the visual arts. And we had some courses at the, uh, at the School of Architecture in drawing and expression, and very soon he called attention for his ability to draw and his facility to draw. He's, um, he's, he, he, he possessed a very delicate line, uh, as you can see in the small work that is in the exhibition. It's more, of course, more pronounced in the larger works, but even in the small scale work, it's possible to appreciate. He had a great sense of humor. Um, and as the time went by, um, we certainly became very close friends. And when I graduated, um, I graduated before him. Uh, we remained connected uh, also, you know, like I did with Fabian. And he, when he went to Europe for the first time, I remember he came back to Medellin via New York, and then came to Washington and stayed in my house 
for a few days and uh, exchange exchange ideas about. I, I had already been in Europe, uh, so we exchanged ideas about his experience. He he was definitely a very sensitive person. Every time I went to Medellin, I visited him, or or rather, he visited me. You know, because my visits were so quick. So he always came to my apartment, and um, I began to notice some kind of melancholy. Um, and I, he complained about the uh, lack of opportunities uh, for artists in Medellin. And believe me, uh, I had to bite my tongue every time I talk about that. And of course, I'm not going to say anything drastic <laughs> right now. Um, I guess the artists who are accompanying us, who accompany us tonight, know better. Uh, but he, he complained very much about the lack of attention from the part of the local institutions, the lack of opportunities, the lack of visibility. And I suggested to him to leave Medellin. I said, you should go abroad. You know, he he was in love of Flo with Florence, the Italian city, and I said, you love Florence, you why don't you go on and move there? You know, in fact, you know, he visited Florence several times after that. But um, I, I just couldn't understand his resistance to to leave the city. Both his parents had passed away already. He had a sister who, by the way, uh, I mean, she was a professional, I think, in economics, and and then she made a total new career. She joined the, uh, the School of Fine Art and um, got a master's degree in art history just to be able to uh, interpret and catalog and take care of uh, Luis Fernando's work legacy after he passed away. But that's, that's another interesting story. That she, her thesis uh, is now published. And the the title of the book is um, in, in, it's, it's in Spanish, but the English will be pretty much like uh, Beyond the Surface, I'll say. That's the title, Beyond the Surface. And, and that is a good title because um, there is a double uh, reading when you look at Luis Fernando's work. Um, the superficial reading uh, that derives from what you see, but there is a different meaning hidden, and it has to do with a fear, I would say, a fear he developed about life, because oddly enough, he had the same condition um, that Fabian had, and eventually kill him as well. The two, the two of them die of the same condition, a heart ailment. And uh, when he finally opened up to me and said that he couldn't take, um, he couldn't undertake an adventure because he was not sure about how his heart will respond, then I understood that fear sometimes translates into his work, he, which when you look overall, um, you see several series. But one of the most interesting series is one he made with angels, and to that series, the work in the exhibition belongs. And, and as, uh, as with Fabian, I also helped him to exhibit in, in several places in the United States. Uh, including Washington, and um, he um, he he worked for a while, for a long while, the the image of the angel, uh, and I think in a way it was um, the angel was um, like an alter ego of him because he wanted to fly, he wanted to go high, but he was constrained by his ailment. So he was almost condemned to remain on earth. So th 
there is a figure, you know, almost metaphysical there, that nevertheless appears in his work when you do this second reading I'm talking about. In his professional life, um, he he tried to always move forward, um, and that's the reason why he created, I will say, one of the first pre-making workshops in Medellin. Uh, I think the experiences he, he had in Florence, Italy, helped him a lot, and he, um, he joined other artists, uh, a couple of artists, in order to establish the workshop. And eventually his, the themes of his work evolved into a very peaceful, um, pleasant, uh, non-controversial uh, theme, which was, which was the uh, landscape. I guess he found in nature uh, some reconciliation uh, for the uh, the handicaps that he knew he had uh, in relation to health, and um, I guess um, the way he died, you know, of a heart attack in his farm, his countryside that he loved so much in a way, uh, had a, uh, has a meaning. So he was finally able to um, come to terms with himself uh, in an environment he loved so much. Uh, thank you, Felix, for giving us that context and being able to speak on Luis's life. Um, I think he represented him very well. And um, I really love this print and the angels and I'm glad to know more about it and uh, where it might have been coming from. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, well, that's actually the last of our works and of our artists. Um, and uh, I'm glad that everyone was able to see all of these works, um, you know, and I just have to say that this is only half of about half about what's actually in the gallery. So please, um, you know, come through um, and see all of these works in person if you can, if you're able to, um, if you have the means, um, because they're really beautiful and they're really something to see. Um, and uh, hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'm just grateful to all of you um, for being so open with me and for speaking and for working with, um, you know, just having, you know, your works here with us and for trusting us to uh, host all of you and be able to kind of help you, um, you know, expand your presence. Um, we're really honored to have this show. It's really um, important for us. And um, yeah, it's just really, it's really beautiful. We're really honored to have you all with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for Thank your you support. Catherine. Thank you for Thank everything. You much, Thank you so much. I hope to many people, <laughs> even a 25% of occupation come there to see the, the show, the exhibition. <laughs> yeah, so I actually want to remind everyone who's with us that, um, you know, our show is open. Um, our show, our gallery is open and you can see our exhibition. Um, our times are Tuesdays through Fridays from 2 to 6 p.m. and Saturdays from 12 to 5. Um, Gail can correct me if I'm wrong with that. Um, but I believe those are our hours. Um, and so you guys can feel free to see everything. Um, <laughs> Salud. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad that we were able to host you guys. And 
Felix, um, I don't know if you just want to say any last words um, in regards to seeing all these shows and um, having everything to kind of just close this out for the night. Um, I just, um, I would like to add um, uh, that it is very important uh, for the artist to be proactive and to um, talk about what they do and, and uh, allow the public that opportunity. The public is by nature kind of timid, you know, but as the famous poet, the Spanish poet said, one doesn't respect what doesn't know. And I think um, if we apply that to the arts, uh, it becomes very true. So what the BRAC is doing, I think, is extraordinary uh, as far as uh, educating the people in the neighborhood. Um, uh, Gail already mentioned that everything or almost everything is for free. Um, and considering the uh, the uh, economic conditions and demographic conditions uh, of the public or the neighborhood, uh, it shouldn't be otherwise. And in a way, that's why the Encuentro as well is for free. You know, we provide all the logistics and the infrastructure, and, and we do the work all on volunteer basis. And that's one of the objectives I had in mind when I conceived the initiative because there is little tradition of community work when it comes to the arts in the city of Medellin. So uh, having the exhibit at Prague is, is a sort of um, another type of encounter. You know, we we sort of find like a, a brother of a sister, you know, we can communicate communicate with uh, our ideas and our intentions, our purpose, our objectives. And uh, again, I really don't have enough words to thank Gail, you, mm. the entire team mm. of Bragg, which many of which I don't know, but I'm very thankful with all of you, not only for the care um, professionalism demonstrated in putting together the show at Bragg, but with the respect you gave all the artists in the show in doing so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Felix. Um, and so this is where we say goodbye. Um, and again, I just want to thank everyone for being here, um, for seeing all these works and uh, all of the artists for just making this work. Um, I really enjoyed seeing every single one go up and um, just kind of coming into the room and seeing everything lined up so beautifully. Um, so thanks to you all. And um, I have to shout out Jorge for being our translator. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> No, not a very good one. I got a little bit nervous, but <laughs> I tried it my best. <laughs> no, you did very well. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, so come see the show in person. Um, <laughs> Everybody else. Everybody out there. We are looking for the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> right now, right now we are at curfew. We, we can't go out this way. We can't go out and the street so so we have to wait at least for for next week to to try to find a way to to get to new york oh wow. yeah, we, are, we are in curfew, curfew. yes wow mm -hmm. <laughs> so everybody is at home in this moment <laughs> <laughs> at home and in, in, in the exhibition we are indoors yes, well we're, indoors. Smart, we're staying home too many you know we have to be smart yeah. about it and we're staying home. Thank yeah, you so much. Uh, yeah. Even though they haven't required it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. 
Bye bye. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Feli. Bye bye. We're very happy. Salud. Thank you. Salud.